All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next chapter here. We're going to take a look at some more uh, integration techniques here, and we're going to start off with a kind of a cool section here on slope fields. So what are slope fields? Well, we're going to be looking at differential equations, and we've actually been doing this for a while. A differential equation is just an equation that involves a derivative. Fancy name, huh? Hence the name differential equation. And so if I give you a derivative is 2x or something like this, what we're going to do is we're going to try to make a picture uh, of what the uh, antiderivative is. So what if I integrate this, what would it look like? Now this is a very nice one because you can actually find the uh, antiderivative. Like we know it, right? If I integrate this, bump it up one to x squared, it's going to be something like this. So I actually know the answer to this. Now the next one, we're not going to know the answer. But for this one, I know this is my answer. And basically, uh, the antiderivative of this is a parabola with some c. So maybe c is 0. And I have, this is my parabola like this. So I could have a parabola, whoop, and there it is. Or maybe uh, it's 1, so I could have, maybe this is my parabola, something like this. Or maybe c is 2, so depending on whatever c is, now c I won't know from this, uh, unless that gives me more information. But basically I'm creating some kind of picture here where it's a bunch of parabolas. So, ooh, I hope your parabolas look better than mine. These are, these are, oh my goodness, did I miss? Anytime you miss, just draw a really big fat dot there, and then, then it's okay. Uh, so basically, depending on what C is, depends on uh, how, where my parabola, the y-intercept of this parabola. So for this differential equation, I knew it's antiderivative. So it's kind of anticlimactic, but it looks something like this. But the idea is we're going to create a family, a, you know, picture of the family of functions that it could be. So. What is a slope field? Well, this is what its slope field is going to look like. We're going to take something, and can you see in there the different shapes in here? Like, these are all parabolas. Like, if you pick one little spot where it crosses, these are all the different Cs. These are all the different parabolas it could be in here. So if you follow these little pictures, we can see these uh, the shape here. So that's nice, but you're like, well, why do I do that? I knew these are going to be parabolas. That's kind of boring. What about something we can't take the antiderivative of? So check this out. So here's a derivative. Uh, but uh, later on, I'll actually, I will show you how to do this one. But for now, I don't know how to find the, uh, the integral. I don't know how to integrate that thing. So I can get a general shape of what this is going to look like just by plotting points. So it's kind of fun here. So if you want, some people like to make a little table over here. And they like to say, OK, if x is something and y is something, then what is my derivative? So you can do something like this. When x is 1 and y is 1, so if I want to find right here what happens, what is my, uh, what's the slope going to be? Well, the derivative is going to be 1 times 1, which is 1. So over here, I'm going to sketch uh, roughly a slope of 1. Let's keep the ones going. What if I did 1 and 0? Well, 1 times 0 is great. What's the derivative? It's just a nice flat line, so it's just going to be a flat line there. How about 1 and negative 1? Well, the, the derivative, when I plug those in, is negative 1, so it looks something like this. And let's do 1 and 2. 1 times 2 is 2, so it's a little bit steeper. And these can just be rough little estimates that would be up 2 over 1, so it gets a little steeper. This will be negative 2. And then you can keep on going, plug and chug. What's nice about this? Well, there's some patterns here. You know, if, if x is 2 and y is 0, well, these are going to be flat lines, aren't they? So this is always going to be a flat line here. Boom. And what about the other way? What if y is, uh, my y values are, I'm sorry, my if my x's are zeros, these are all going to be zeros over here. So that's kind of nice. So I've got some flat lines here. And then it's just a matter of plugging in. So maybe you don't want to do a table. Maybe you can do them in your head. This is going to be the point 0.2 times 1. So it's going to be 2. It's going to be kind of steep. 2 times 2 is 4. So it's even steeper. So I'm just approximating. 2 times negative 1 will be negative 2. And this will be negative 4, even steeper. Uh, then over here, negative 1. Ooh, check this out. What's a negative times a negative back to a positive? So it's going to be at positive 1. Negative 1 times negative 2 is going to be at positive 2. So, and then you can kind of see some symmetry from the other side, can't you? They're going to match up uh, from the other side. And then same thing up here. We got negative 1 times 1 is a negative. That's going to be negative 2. Negative 2 and 1. And again, if you don't like all this, make a table. Just keep this going. I'm just kind of going a little faster here. But negative 2 times 1 is that, and negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. So a lot of the same kind of things on both sides. So you can see the general shape here. If I pick some point, uh, and oh, good, I'm going to do it. It wants to know what is the slope at 1, negative 2. So if I want, I can plug that in. 1 and times negative 2 
what is the slope? It is negative 2. But I'm referring to what? 1, negative 2, this point right here. That is negative 2. So slope of the tangent line right there is negative 2. So you can kind of see the family of functions here. They actually look like parabolas, but there's a, a flat line in the middle here. So maybe they're more like this. You know, if I'm up here talking about it, it looks something like this. If I'm down here, maybe picking one out, it looks like this. So it's kind of different if I'm above or below. So this is pretty cool. We're going to get some interesting shapes here um, to get some of these different family of functions here. Very cool. Go ahead and see if you can create a table. If you want to, go ahead and make a table for this. I left you some room because uh, th this one's a little bit more complex. I'll do just maybe one of them for you. So like if x is 1 and y is 1, those are always easy ones, you're going to have 1 minus 2 times 1. So 1 minus 2 times 1 is negative 1. So you got one of them right there. I'll give you, the, I'll give you one of those. See if you can uh, either create a table if you need to or plug these in and see what your slope field looks like. All right, here we go. Hopefully your slope field looks something like this. Um, some key things that I hope you for sure can easily check are these flat lines here. At negative 1, negative 2 is 0. At 0, 0. And at 1, positive 2 is a 0 slope. So those are ones you got to nail. It got kind of tricky here. You know, I was getting some pretty steep slopes here, so it's kind of hard to differentiate. But I think you can kind of see the general idea, trying to get those a little bit steeper. And if you have a table, you can, you can show the exact values for each of those. But hopefully that's the rough shape of this thing. Uh, and then I ask you a question here. Uh, f is a uh, function that satisfies differential equation. Write the equation for the line tangent to it through this point. So if I'm looking at the point 1, negative 2, I'm looking right here. So what does that mean? So I know the derivative. So basically this means what is the derivative uh, at this point 1, negative 2. So the derivative at this point is going to be, if I put 1, negative 2 in there, so I'm going to say the y value is negative 2. The x value is 1, so I'm going to say negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So I'm going to say the derivative of that point is negative 4. So that is the slope of the tangent line at that point. So this is great. Once you have this going on, uh, it's just a matter of plugging your equation. We got y minus uh, a negative 2. The slope of the tangent line is negative 4. And then x minus uh, 1 there. So this is the equation of the line tangent at that point. So pretty cool, huh? So this shows you the derivative uh, at each individual point. So again, I can't find the antiderivative of this right now. So I got a picture that kind of gives me a rough idea of the general shape it looks like. And it's pretty crazy looking. Uh, but I can still find, OK, what is, if I could find the antiderivative, if I could find the y and graph it, this would be the tangent at that point. So it's pretty cool little workaround to get an idea of what the uh, original function looks like. Awesome. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the particular solution here. So if I give you the slope field for this differential equation, so here's the derivative, here's the slope field, so it makes one of these, and I want to know the particular solution, kind of like my original parabola. Where, where, What's it going to look like when it crosses through a specific point? So the one that goes through 0, 2 is right here. So I know it has to contain this point. So if I want to draw the actual solution, this is kind of like those initial condition problems, and we're going to do more with this later on in the chapter. But just to get a rough idea of what that equation would look like, we'll just follow along these kind of the slope fields here and get this general shape of this thing so if I just follow the arrows here it looks like something like this so I'm gonna draw this one in blue there it is uh, it's this right here so that would be one solution but it's gonna be different depending on the the point that it goes through so maybe I'm gonna come over here and I'll use black for this one uh, so I'm going to use this in black. It's different if I pick the point 1, negative 1. So 1, negative 1 is going through this. So this function would look very different. Uh, if I follow the curves, what's happening here, it's kind of doing something like this. And then it's kind of going womp, like that. So depending on the point that it contains, it's going to be a very different solution. So it all depends on that initial condition um, of what's going on in this. Very cool. So that's just sketching them, and we're going to do more with that later on. Very good. How about this? So a lot of times on the, maybe on the AP test, they want to do some matching type stuff with this. Can you take the differential equation and match it to its slope field? So if you wanted to, you could just make slope fields for all these. That's kind of tedious. So I kind of look for some shortcuts or some things going on here. Things with one variable are really nice, because if you really wanted to, you could kind of you can kind of just go ahead and get the antiderivative and look at it. Or I look for things that make 0. So I'm looking for, yeah, if I made my little xy table, what if x is negative 1? So anytime x is negative 1, what's going to happen? You're going to get a 0 here. So at negative 1, well, 
on that one, they would, they would all be zeros. But it doesn't matter what Y is. So I have something like this. So it definitely can't be the first one. No way. So let's erase that. We don't need all that stuff. But it can't be this bad boy here. No way. Uh, how about X squared? Again, this is something that it's just got one variable. So you can plug it in and see. Again, I always look for the zero. So what if X was zero? So if X is zero, again, these would all be flat lines. It doesn't matter what Y is. It would always be flat. Now, it's not giving me anything on this axis, but can it look how sharp it is right around it. So there's no way it's going to be something. I don't think it's going to be something with one variable at all. You're going to get these nice uh, constants when that happens. Uh, but when, So you can see these different things. They're much more challenging. So these got X's and Y's. Again, if uh, let's take a look at this one. I think of something that makes this 0, so maybe 1, maybe negative 1 and 1. So let's say when X is negative 1 and Y is 1, aha! See, that would be zero right there. Now, this point right here is not there, but see how close it is? It's pretty flat. So this one I'm pretty excited about. I'm going to draw a little smiley face. I'm not saying that's it, um, but we can check other points on here that look like maybe the opposite, one and negative one. See how it's flat here? So we've got some good things going on. Maybe it's flat here at zero, zero, uh, negative two and two. That one's kind of off the table. So this one's looking promising. Let's just rule out the other ones to make sure that it's not the other ones. Um, so x over y. Some interesting things could happen here. What if y was 0? Ooh, this would be a problem. I mean, who, maybe x is 1. Who cares? But can you divide by 0? No, you'd have some undefined this. So it wouldn't be marked, or sometimes they use a, a vertical line. I've seen both. Um, but we'd have some issues when y was 0. And it's and I don't see that issue. I know there's nothing marked on the when uh, y is 0 here. But you can tell around it. See how it's changing around it? So I, this one seems problematic. We can try to do other things maybe um, what if we picked one and one should give us one shouldn't it if X is one Y is one so if X is one Y is one that's kind of close so it's okay how about negatives if we make a negative in here negative one and one uh, so negative one and one should give me a negative one so I don't think that's that's happening here it doesn't look good uh, so if you try a couple of points the undefined one definitely ruins it but that one's not good and again I don't know much of, Really, what do you know about natural logs without a calculator? We know the natural log of 1. What is the natural log of 1? The natural log of 1 is 0. So if y is 1 up here, it means, because there's only one variable, it would always be 0. It doesn't matter what the x is. You'd always have this flat line here. So definitely not going to be this. So it really comes down to, got to be letter C. Boom, right there, x plus y. So that is the slope field of x plus y. Pretty cool. Those are slow fields. Have fun with these. They're kind of fun. And um, good luck on the mesh check. Peace out.